What's happening, everyone? We are back for a Sunday stream, and this stream, you could save the world or crypto, true DeFi, your country. We could, You could make a difference. However, you have very limited time left. It could be a very short period of time. It is unclear. However, you could have up to three hours left or so to, uh, to get your stuff in, and uh, something you've been shouted at for years, I mean, days, perhaps weeks now by both Richard Crypto Coffee, I've retweeted a few as well. Lots of other people uh, have been talking about this where you can get your voice heard and GPT and uh, AI friends can make that a lot easier. So uh, without further ado, I'll get to chat in just a minute. Let's bring him in. Crypto Coffee, the man himself. What's up, guys? I'm eating pumpkin been... seeds and I'm uh, sending comments to the SEC. That's a uh, great Sunday night. It's a Sunday night that uh, we all should aspire to do in reality. Uh be careful with the water. You don't want to grow pumpkins in your stomach. I heard that when I was a child and I think it's still true, I believe. We're all planting the seeds here, figuratively and literally. Well, now, now you're bringing it to like, you know, you thoughts of our friend Somi popping up, you know, the nine inch decks and stuff. You just, uh, you went a different direction there, Mr. Coffee. Um, but that's okay. Yeah. That's right. The Chad shows up. The Chad of Donner Swan shows up right at the time. How's it going, man? Get a few pumps in. How's it going? Good to see you. When did you walk? Yep. Actually, so free speech. I agree with the title. That's uh, you, you want to kick us off, man? Once uh, once you got the pumpkin seeds digested. Yeah, yeah. So like, basically, wait, wait um, if you haven't been submitting your comments and generating multiple proton mail emails and using AI to make your your life incredibly easy and submitting these comments that takes literally less than two minutes, um, if you haven't been doing that, then crypto is going to die and it's all your fault. So I just want everybody to know that you've got three hours left to submit your comment. Otherwise, everything goes to zero. And it quite literally is your fault. And we're all going to laugh at you and point fingers. Um, I, I'm going to be okay. I mean, my bags will go to zero, but at least it won't be my fault. So, you know, I just want to offload that responsibility onto everybody else because I've been submitting tens of comments, maybe maybe hundreds. I haven't really counted. It's been like multiple days, you know. It's just uh, every day I'll do like, I don't know, five, ten, just when I, I got a couple minutes. And uh, I just, I don't, I don't count how many I've done, but uh, you just click on the boxes, all right, and just do it. It's like push-ups. You don't count how many you've done. Otherwise, it's cheating. It's another rule, I think. Mm. Um, that's So uh, is that what Finding Jim was talking about today? <laughs> he, he made the tweet, uh, what, are you, what are you all doing with your lives? Seriously. And uh, I wonder if he was talking about the SEC commenting on there, saving crypto. He could have been. You never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. Is this a new tweet? This is a tweet from Richard. Uh, let's see. Earlier today. I think it's the latest tweet on it, on the stuff. Oh. Yeah. I don't think I read this one yet. Yeah, that's, that's why you're here, man. Tomorrow is the end of the comment period for safeguarding advisory client assets. If you didn't bother to submit anonymous relevant comment to be given all the tools and education, then you better be real busy doing something important. So, <laughs> I love the second paragraph. The interview is starting with <laughs> which which BS companies did you promote? Which anti-crypto <laughs> rules did you fail to comment on? Do you promote margin trading? I think I'd pass that interview, but the answer to that is no. None. Uh... All three rules that I'm aware of right now. Also, there was another rule. I, I called my congressperson uh, trying in support of the Financial uh, Innovation and Technology Act, but that's just because Coinbase said it was a good idea, and they they want you know the the commissioner of the Agricultural uh, CFTC board, whatever guy, he wanted to kind of classify uh, digital assets as as commodities. I don't know if that's the right answer either. It does seem to be better than giving leaving things in the hands of Gary. Uh, so I called my local congressperson. It's and it's super easy. Go to standwithcrypto.org. Links are in Max's description below. Standwithcrypto.org. You just type in your zip code, no matter where you live. And if you don't even have to live in the USA, guys, just type in a regular. You don't even have to live in the USA. Just type in a zip code, any zip code. Find a congressperson. Call them on the phone, and their secretary might answer. They might not answer, and just be like, "Yep, I just wanted to talk about the financial inclusion, financial whatever innovation." It'll tell you the name of the, the act, okay? It's some some long act, 2023 Financial Innovation Technology Act, all right? And you just say, hey, I'm in support of this because it's very important that we get crypto right. It's very important that we don't uh, do overreaching and undue regulation, blah, blah, blah. They'll even give you a script, okay? So that takes, you know, two minutes as well. And you can do that during the daytime when people are actually awake and at work. And um, yeah, you can help help further the cause of crypto. You can help be a part of making crypto better in the USA. You don't even have to live in the USA. Sometimes the people that live in other countries work harder than us lazy Americans do. 
It's, uh, that's something that happens from time to time. So that's why we invented ChatGPT. That's American invention, I believe. And uh, they integrated it apparently with this public comments thing, which I'm gonna put in the chat. And, oh shoot, I hate when it does the t.co crap. There we go. Sorry, I will, uh, it's so annoying when it shortens it and I'm trying to post in the chat. I can't get the, you know. Yeah, anyway. I love this. Let's walk through like a tutorial for people that don't know how easy this is. If you know, a lot of you guys probably never even bothered to click on the link. Okay. Uh, probably people watching have, I mean, everyone watching you is probably a pretty hardcore hexagon down for the cause, down for freedom of speech, down for real crypto, removing middlemen and all that. But go to public comments, gpt.com. It's right in front of your face. Watch the screen, look at it and go here. Now go down. All right. And you'll see the sec rule. These are terrible proposed rules that are overreaching and vast and they involve definition of brokers, exchanges, definition of, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff, right? That just doesn't make any sense. So you need to select an issue you want to address from the drop down menu and have just click on these drop downs, click on them. You know, it doesn't matter which one. Let's say you think that uh, you can scroll down. I didn't realize that there was actually like 80 different rules. I think they keep, I think they've been adding more and more issues, mm -hmm. right? Probably. There's a lot of them now. So we're not like repeating ourselves as much, hopefully. I like the one that's, uh, let's see if I can find on it here. It was about basically making America less competitive uh, worldwide, like that kind of thing. I think that was actually like very meaningful and very true too. Of course. I mean, innovation is being driven out of the U.S. They don't, they don't want Binance in the USA at all. And it sucks because Binance, I mean, call them what you will. Yeah, they're a centralized middleman, but CZ seems to have actually been running a legitimate business so far. I mean, maybe he's done, I don't know if he's done any sketchy stuff, but it seems to be backlash from missing the FTX thing or the corruption that had to do with that and wanting to point fingers and say, blame it all on Binance or the Chinese or whatever the scapegoat of the day is. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see. If, we'll see if they've done anything wrong. But, uh, you know, a legitimate exchange is kind of an oxymoron. You know what I mean? Just do it decentralized. Yeah. Yeah. I, I said the other day, I don't think I've used the centralized exchange to actually get money in. Other than a fiat on ramp, I haven't actually traded on exchange. I don't think for years now, like since Dexys existed. Why? why? What's the point? Yeah. Yeah. I see the lack of clarity in report. Yeah. A couple of interesting ones here to the uh, inconsistent regulatory treatment, decentralized exchanges and negative impact on token utility may limit the ability tokens, functions, utility tokens, hindering their intended use cases. Yeah. There's a lot of negative side effects that come from these uh, uh, not well thought out uh, uh, proposals. Yep. My, my favorite is just, uh, I've been going to just, I've been kind of typing in my own rules. Sometimes my own concern is just you're harming investors more than you're helping them. The SEC is doing the opposite here of what it was intended to. And, um, education is how we solve this. We don't solve this by rules that are hard to even understand and stuff that, that aren't even fully, fully defined and, and changing words retroactively to be vague and, basically open people up to enforcement actions whenever the SEC feels like we need education. And I feel like the SEC is just, obviously they're, they totally lost the plot. They're corrupt. They're incompetent, but you can make your voice heard. So look at what Max is doing right now. He's clicking on the buttons. He's, he's clicking on the drop downs. You can type your own concern, but let's just simplify it for now. You click your name and click generate. And yeah, the letter length, 800 word letter. Okay, nothing too long, maybe like four or five paragraphs, pretty readable. Okay, you click generate. AI does this for you in three seconds. Look at it typing. Wow, AI, the future, everybody, 2023. Now, I like to copy and paste this, and then I open up my Proton Mail and I copy and paste it. And you, sh you should do a little bit of editing too. You should do a little bit of editing. Okay, like type in a sentence of your own. Or what I like to do is I like to delete a couple letters and a couple of words so that. I have, you know, typos to make it look more human. I don't know if they have a, see, I don't know if they have a, an AI scanner, an AI detector. I don't even know if that's, that exists yet, but you can just add a couple of your own sentences. It takes an extra 30 seconds, right? Or delete a letter in the word protection, you know, and just make it look like a, make it look like a human being wrote it, you know, and even just change the from and the to field. Like you can say from a concerned citizen or to Instead of dear SEC, you could be like, please, urgent message, please forward to Gary Gensler immediately. And just put your own touch on it. That takes an extra 30 seconds, just in case it gets 
somehow triggered by a, a spam filter or an AI filter. Also, go to an actual email address, right? Don't just, uh, does this give you the option to send an email? No, it doesn't, right? I'm so, sure one of them did. That's what's telling you in the green room, but I don't think this is the one. Yeah, I, see, I, I do feel better using this one because it tells you actually go and send the email, right? Yeah. Um, if, if we're sending these automatically, I also don't know if it's generating some kind of a temporary email. And if it is, is that temp email address getting also automatically moved to their spam folder? So I want to make sure these are getting read. So I just literally take an extra single minute, copy rule-comments at sec.gov, paste that uh, address into the email um, app that you're using, and make sure the subject line S7-04-23, you can see it right on the screen here. You just copy and paste that into the subject line. Another trick is in the subject line, you can use all capital letters like urgent or please read or action required. Action required, colon, comment for rule S70423. That's a lot better than just copy pasting S70423, <laughs> okay? So just like use your brain a little bit, guys. Like I, I know AI helps a lot, but you know, put in like a couple ounces of thought. And I think that's going to make it a lot more effective. And at least it'll seem like these are real people because they are. They are real people. Yeah, I was cracking up because I remember I watched your video. Uh, you did a few days ago on it. And uh, you, you were like, don't don't just put in there like, you know, Guzzler's bad and all that stuff. I'm just saying, up, say, hey, <laughs> G hey G G G Ugh, Gary Guzzler, you know, stop chugging semen all day, right? You, that doesn't get the ball anywhere that doesn't move the needle forward no needles no balls no no don't put that in the subject no guzzling in the subjects That's, uh, <laughs> instructions was... again it can, cannot be simpler one select an issue hit two hit generate just as we uh, just talked about three email the sec dot rule dash comments use s70423 in subject or use this form i'm going to click on the form to see what that's about could be even yeah. easier. There you go. I, I thought there There's was a form, form on the website. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did this once. Um, yeah, I used this yeah. form once. I just didn't know. Because previously when I went to the SEC site, it like wasn't allowing me to see this form. So I don't know. But yeah, it's okay. just gotten easier and easier. And I love all the tools people have made. It's really great. So congrats to everybody that's actually uh, doing the work and pushing the needle forward and helping to create the future of uh, innovation-friendly uh, crypto environment and uh, a freedom friendly crypto environment where you know you can actually hold your own self sovereign money. I'm just going to pull your video up as well. Very good video, very well made as usual. And uh, if you want to do another walkthrough again later, oh, for dude, anyone dude, this is like my least viewed video. Nobody fucking cares, man. And it's like, tell me why my coin number go up, please. What ticker do I look at today, sir? <laughs> they don't, they don't want to do anything, man. I'm one of those one of those views. I watched the full thing. I was like, oh, that's actually very informative. And, Thank you, Max. Uh, Dude, yeah. you're awesome. Thanks. I mean, you, you didn't even need to watch that because you already know what to do. But I mean, well, I, I had an idea and I was like, oh, you know, if I just watch the coffee video, it's right in front of me. I'm going down the road. I don't listen to it while I'm here. And then I'll be like, like so maybe that's like the <laughs> secret too. I don't know if other people do this for, for me. Yeah. If there's something that comes up, I'm like, oh, it's easy. I'll just, you know, I'll just watch it real quick or listen to it on the way somewhere. Or otherwise, I'm taking a run. I listen to it and now like air friends me, you know, every day, like I listen to his videos and I'm like way more informed about these yeah. things. I don't have to go and search Twitter on all the time. So like, it again, nice. it's just a shortcut. Yeah. I'll wake up, I'll go for a run in the morning, do about a mile. And it's like the perfect time to listen to a Somi video. It's great, man. That guy is killing the algorithm. I, he works harder than me, I think right now. Um, actually, I don't know. I do That'd a lot be. of stuff, but it's a little bit, uh, it's not always visible on the outside. Um, somebody went in the chat wants to know, coffee, do you really drink coffee? Uh, I do drink about a cup a day in the morning, usually either a shot of espresso or like a full cup with a little cream, but you know, not too much, uh, just enough. And so sometimes I think I don't even really need it. And then Dixon says I smoke coffee grinds. I don't even know what would happen if, uh, I don't even know if that would be psychoactive, but I, I'm not interested in finding out. <laughs> Thanks. Prefer not smoking coffee grinds. I gotta stop eating these seeds, man. Pumpkin seeds are. A I'm gonna put these in a different room. Hold on. Okay. Are they salted or sweet? Now you got me curious about them. Step two B: proofread your letter. Make sure AI didn't say anything crazy. That is true. Shout out to proofreading. Um, That's a great. Sorry. That's. I was a gonna great, say, I don't proofread. Uh, <laughs> I don't proofread my tweets sometimes, 
and I'll send them out, especially a poll. And I'll like, I'll fuck up one of the poll things. I'm like, ah, what? Don't, ah, why did I do that? This is going to be so great. But go ahead. Same thing you were going to say, man. It's just, uh, AI is not perfect. And, you know, AI lets you be lazy, but it doesn't let you just click a button and just like, it's all good. We are not victims. No, we are not. Normal swings are part of the game. Real D5. By the way, guys, if you want to go to pulsepetition.org, um, me and this awesome crew that I'm working with, Kinetics and Daniel, you guys will meet Daniel. We'll do some Twitter spaces pretty soon, but uh, we're signing a petition, pulsepetition.org. We've already paid for the lawyer. He's a really awesome lawyer, really fighting for the same ideals that we, uh, you know, that, that we all agree with. And if you read the petition, the petition, I mean, you, you can read it, but it just says, essentially, we are not victims of the SEC or we are not victims of Richard Hart. In fact, we were actually hurt by the SEC's actions, and it goes into many different facets of how and why uh, we actually did sacrifice for freedom of speech and what exactly we did. So make your voice heard. We do need to collect this personal personal information, which if you don't want to give away your personal info, then simply don't sign and don't complain and have, move on with your day, live your life. But if you do want to be a part of changing history and fighting back and making your voice heard, we've already got 30 signatures. I think we can get up, up to 1,000 pretty quickly. Uh, we don't have to go read the whole thing right now. No one's going to want to read it, uh, you know, but but do read it in your spare time if you want to. You can actually download the PDF, too. There's a button in the lower right corner of the site to download the PDF. And yeah, pulsepetition.org. We've got a bunch of details in the bottom. It, really, just reading the website will give you the gist of it. If you read the the bottom half of the website, I've got the cliff notes, so to speak, all the all the talking points here. Um, again, it's already paid for, but feel free to donate. We do have a donation address, a legal defense fund address and led by a legend. His name is Robert Barnes. He's gotten people like Wesley Sle Snipes out of jail. He's gotten people like Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, very, very, very famous lawyer. And he's going to be submitting for us on behalf of the free America law center. So they've, yeah, they've basically taken up the case pro bono. We're shouldering all the legal bills and all you got to do is sign the petition. And this will be read by a, a court, a federal court. So be sent by a legal firm, by a well-respected law center to the, the judge. And the judge will have to read it and take into account all of the people's point of view before any court proceedings are underway. So uh, why not, right? What do you have to lose? Now, you do have to type in a real name. Ideally, you should probably put in a real phone number. I don't know if your address is that important. No one's going to be probably coming to your house. But in the, in the very rare case that they do try to call a couple of people on this list just to verify Hey, did you sign this petition? You have to be willing to, you know, in one in a thousand chance that they call you to pick up the phone and say, yep, that was me. And they'll, they'll be like, okay, have a nice day. You know, that's a hypothetical scenario, but just put in real information. All right. Uh, and don't, and you don't have to be from the USA as well. I want to make that clear. You do not have to be from the USA. In fact, it might look very interesting to the judge that we are a global community and it might be a reminder that the sec does not police the world and that we are a global grassroots organic community uh not just a bunch of victims that were too you know stupid to realize what was happening here which is just insulting to our intelligence right guys the sec thinks you're dumb so fight back and how easy is it to fight back by just filling in a couple fields it takes you 30 seconds or less pulsepetition.org i want to see some more signatures on there by the end of the stream we've got 29 i think let's get to 100 by the end of the week how about that Gotta pump those numbers up, man. I need a thousand. A thousand. <laughs> I need a ten x. Uh, we're right. we're aiming for a thousand, and I know we've got tens of thousands of people in the community, so that would be a very very small subset. I think it's very achievable, and if we get more, great. You know, Ripple had I think fifty thousand, and I don't know if those were all legit, but Ripple's also been around for nine years. Uh, Hex and Paul Chain is much newer, so you know I think we can easily get a, a really good sample size here, and I think almost everybody watching would agree that. Did the SEC protect investors when they dropped the price of Paul's chain by 58% in a day based on fear, uncertainty, and doubt? No, they did the exact opposite. Did they even bother to try to educate or try to uncover the actual facts about who Richard might actually be, what he built? No. Have you read the complaint? There's tons of misinformation in there. It's, it's disgusting and it's insulting to all of our intelligence. So get out there and fight back. Yeah. Uh it's it's almost like there should be more parodies of this where the sec just comes in they're like we're here to protect you and then like the, the chart just goes down just goes <laughs> way down and they're like yeah. look we're protecting them it's like oh it just keeps going down it's like oh i feel so protected i feel so hugged right now <laughs> yeah like, you can you can see very clearly on the chart where the sec protected you guys 
You can see very luckily we've actually recovered. We've gained some ground back. It's it's been you know two or three months now, so uh, you know bear markets don't last forever. And what you know SEC, despite what people will tell you, they don't force people to click sell or buy, and they can't stop you from clicking buy or sell. So it is you, the individual, that has the power to you know transmit this message, to amplify this message, to get other people onboarded, to buy, to sell. You click the buttons. They can't stop you from buying Hex. They can't stop you from buying Pulse Chain. It's real decentralized software. You buy some Ethereum, you send it to your MetaMask, and you can swap it for whatever you want in the real decentralized ecosystem. So the only thing really stopping the price from going up is all the fear of the individuals. Okay, that's that's what it is. So realize that we don't need to have this fear. When number one, we're fighting back. Number two, Richard's a badass founder. I don't know if he's gonna fight. Or I don't even know if he's been served. There's so many unknown unknowns, but rather than sitting around and worrying about imaginary horribles all day, we could join the team for you know team crypto. We could join the fight and fight for the ideals of crypto, which is what Hex and Pulse Chain stands for. And so we can all get off our butt, stop being armchair quarterbacks. And a lot of hexicans and stuff, you guys don't need me to tell you this, right? But the people that maybe just got here, I don't think some people realize that you're actually in something much bigger than yourself. You're you're in this separation of money and state cryptocurrency is a very powerful thing and it has the ability to give people power away from centralized governments printing your money into oblivion and stealing your purchasing power virtually by inflating your money and taxing you to no end it just has not been working out and cryptocurrencies are a place for all this hyperinflated dirty fiat money to flow into you know and uh we all can be free and rich at the same time we can get free and maybe the number goes up a whole bunch because, again, this money has got to flow somewhere. And people are waking up to the fact that the fiat Ponzi scheme is running out of new victims. OK, uh, the stock market is P.E. ratios are through the roof, right? The, the stock market is hyperinflated as well because we, they print more money and they're not going to stop. Again, why shouldn't this, some of this money flow into superior assets, digital, cryptographically verifiable, peer to peer, borderless cash, bring it across any country. You don't, you don't have to carry bars of gold. And it's free speech, right? Publishing to a blockchain, publishing some numbers on a public database is just like writing a book, right? Uh, Ethereum, Pulse Chain. Pulse Chain is the, the paper. And let's say Hex and Pulse X are the novels. They're written on the publishing software, which is the Pulse Chain. So that's all we're doing here. Okay. Thank you, True Moxie. Thank you, True Moxie, for signing. And thank you, Armando. Thank you, Armando. Yeah, you guys do not have to be in the USA. It might actually look pretty good. Think, come to think about it to the judge, you know, realizing, oh, we've got people from all over the world, Mexico, Australia, Ireland, UK, uh, just everywhere. You know, it's it's great. Yeah, man, this is this is the type of work. <clears throat> Again, you, you mentioned earlier, like the, the video is one of your one of your least viewed. And it is is I feel like it's always like that. Like some of the most important stuff is not the clickbait stuff. It's not the I'm, I'm not saying like. <laughs> Yeah, I think I just related all your stuff clickbait and that one thing. No, no, you did. no, no okay. not that. I get it. But yeah, yeah, it's like the, a lot of the important things that people need to see aren't the things they're going to be interested enough to even click on or go go search out or even come across because they're not they're getting the dopamine hits in this thing that asks them to go do work or even if it's the simplest work possible, even if it's already most of it's even done for you. Like that's the that's the tragedy too. It's like the most important work gets the least amount of eyes. So um, salute you for doing that, man. Like that's uh, you're, you're doing the work that needs to be done. Thanks. Well, you know, I got to I got to give props to Richard, too. I wouldn't have even realized what work exactly needed to be done. He helped uh, get everybody the specific goals. Right. He built the products. He he drove home the mission and stuff. And so I'm kind of just carrying that forward a lot of the times. Um, sometimes, you know, putting my own take on it and giving people an easier way to do it, walking people through it so that they're not confused. Uh, Benny Blanca says, do it, do it. It's called an Make your dreams dream. come true. <laughs> just do it just sign the petition yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you petition. can see my arm yeah you can see what coffee's are. Do it. <laughs> yes. yeah yeah it's uh it's an amicus brief it means friend of the court right and anytime after the court proceedings start you're actually allowed to uh file these amicus briefs and send these in and they're forced to be read by a judge and hopefully the judge will have some empathy towards the opposite side of the equation whereas i'm not even sure if the sec has found any legitimate victims other than a couple of mentally ill individuals out there that potentially might have uh, might still be claiming somehow that they they need money there there's a snitcher's fee too the sec does bribe people to extort other people the sec bribes people to extort other people how disgusting is that there's so no they need to be man. they no accountability well luckily they do have Only some upside. because congress they're accountable to congress at the end of the day 
Well, and no, no, trying... like the snitcher's fee and stuff. Like that's what somebody's talking about too. Is like th- th- there's only upside. If you report something and it goes nowhere, then that you there's nothing happens. If you report it and it goes somewhere, you get what 10% or something. So it's like a totally rigged thing. It makes people report things that, you know, I've seen stuff in the community recently. They're just reporting stuff. And okay, why don't you just, yeah, is, that, is that what we're getting to? Because you're going to report every founder out there that does something in crypto. You're just going to report them because because maybe they'll get investigated and, and all that stuff. Like that's that's a that's that's very unhealthy. I don't like that. Yeah, and they also that also uh, predicates the fact that, um, or, or it assumes rather that you you know the the outcome of any successful quote unquote uh, ruling is simply money and a fine. And how does paying a fine and money? To the sec help any of the victims and where in you know the previous cases like uh, library for example was any of the money seized or confiscated by the sec given back to the investors that they claim were victims I, i'm not aware that it was ever given back to any investors so who are they helping here who are they helping exactly is uh gary gensler just helping his buddies back at goldman sachs or is he helping the elizabeth warrens of the world and maybe powers even higher up than that uh, there's a blatant conflict Blatant conflict of interest staring you right in the face, and uh, we we have to defend that. We have to defend blockchain technology as freedom of speech, which is what it is. Hey, ten signatures in the last ten minutes. You guys are awesome. You guys are amazing. It's up to forty-two. Wow, another one. That's amazing, guys. Subs will hit fifty-four k during bull market. I reckon says Ma. What are your subs oh, at now? Uh, eight, eight-ish, somewhere through there. Nice. That's pretty good. I mean, if mine hits 34K or 54, then coffee is going to be like 100, 112. Going for Probably it. in the hundreds, hopefully. Um, yeah. That's what we need. I mean, we need we need uh, people who are creating. Again, you're the you're one of the few people who you don't stir up drama for likes. Like you deserve every sub and every shout out you get for providing straight up value for years. Like that's that's what we need. We need more people like you. Thanks, man. I, I do appreciate the kind words. Um, yeah, drama can be fun, but uh, and it can it's definitely engaging. It's what gets the clicks. But a lot of it is uh, incestual drama, which I really, really hate because it's just people cannibalizing each other out of boredom and anger and desperation. And hey, look at my new shit coin over here and I'm going to craft some fake narrative and stuff. It, it's there's a lot of uh, just it's self-destructive behavior because we're all on the same team. I mean, if we want to cause some drama, let's stir up some drama with like the SEC or like some somebody that's not. I mean, I even think it's kind of silly when crypto crypto bros go after each other because it's like what are we what are we accomplishing i mean maybe if you know taking a couple shots at the whole big bit boy fiasco for a laugh and to get some views okay sure that might not be the worst idea i mean that man i don't know he's poor guy he seems a little unhinged right now that bit boy i i hope he comes back to us i hope he uh, comes back down to earth and ends up being a pulse chain hexagon supporter because I, I think he already he always liked richard right they've hung out before in real life um yeah and with the concert i remember seeing the concert pictures and stuff so he's, he's always said nice things about richard I mean, they yeah. did streams a long few years ago there's there's old streams of him richard too yeah so we need all the people we can get that's a, that's the thing i think a lot of people in the community they see, see something that somebody says something they don't like or, or whatever and then they're like okay i don't like that person i don't want anything to do with them oh they did this did that yeah. even if there's some legitimate things it's like you know <clears throat> my, my position is <clears throat> excuse me we need uh all the people we can get like for the bull run. Like we need, we need so many full force. Like the dude, been killing great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But he's, he's boy, driving like, the narrative ever. aspect too. He's doing the daily news and like, here's what happened today. This hour, here's what's happened three hours ago. You know what I mean? So what, you know, baby I'm, I'm not... dolls, I got something for you today. <laughs> it's great, dude. It's, I mean, even I watch yeah. something and it's like, I'm, I'm creating sure. stuff. So I, usually I don't have time to watch, you know, everything. So that just goes to show you like he, he's, he's figured out what works. We've also we all got to figure out what works, and it's not going to be, in my opinion, it's not going to be picking a fight with you know, uh, you know, anime profile picture, cuck boy sixty nine four twenty, right? Like, because what what does that gain you? Or like some sh- shit coiner four twenty, like you argue with shit coiner four twenty on Twitter all day, and are you really making the circle big? Are you making the pie bigger for everyone, or are you just trying to be right on some internet argument from some guy you've never met before? uh be honest with ourselves here right so, so sometimes i'm all i'm saying is there i can see where there may be uh clearly clearly there there is sometimes a benefit to drama right richard hart was <laughs> there was a reason he said i need better enemies right because he was making the rounds destroying all the debating all of his haters to get attention but i think even he was kind of like 
kind of like uh upset with the level of uh haters that he he ended up getting right and it's uh, even at the end of the day too it's like okay you, you debate like uh the wolf of wall street guy or whatever the little kid that was like drinking like uh he was like vaping and drinking when he was trying to debate richard and uh i'm, I'm kind of curious oh, yeah. as to how many extra people that really onboarded right because if we're onboarding like i don't know you know maybe you did onboard some of his really degenerate followers because they finally saw okay this guy is clearly vastly smarter than uh want to be wolf of wall street boy but uh it's just yeah it's hard because a lot of a lot of it's you're just tackling these pockets of people that are already in crypto and a lot of these pockets of people have already made up their mind and dug their heels in the sand about what coins they like anyway so but you know bitcoin, bitcoin but, magazine deletes the interview yeah <laughs> Crazy. Look, crazy. we got backups though yeah hex community's oh, got yeah. backups of everything oh it's out there you can find it but it's just like if you're gonna you know host and sponsor and put time and energy and promote do an interview with anyone <clears throat> even if it doesn't go in your favor like just integrity wise it would seem i would be compelled to just be like well there okay we did it like not try to yeah. hide it or something it's that's a little a little strange to me i'm not sure maybe they have maybe they have reasons other than just hating i, I i'm not aware of them though um, just want to shout out to, uh, yeah, leaderboard here for donating. I almost want to say Elizabeth Warren here. I don't know why it just looks like Elizabeth Warren. I know that's <laughs> probably not her. She probably I'd like not to imagine it is <laughs> a man that's can her burner account. WWRN. <laughs> yeah. W R. Um, well, uh, yeah. Hey, say what you will about Ben, but he donated a million bucks. I, uh, yeah. I don't, you know, for a guy, it's so weird. Like for a guy begging for money to then donate a million dollars, it's like, what I, I, that's I'm not my reaction too. I was like, I thought he was just asking for money, and then he's like, he found it, and then he, uh, okay. I mean, if you're, you know, it's better than other things. If he's going to put it somewhere, then yeah, at least. Do it. I'm just very confused by the whole situation. He posted a picture with his mistress again. And I, I guess he got a divorce. Why should I? Why do I care about this stuff, guys? Why should I care? Nobody on the street ask ask ten people on the street. Hey, have you, have you heard of Bitboy Crypto? They'll be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Bit be asking Richard that. Hart, it'd be like, yeah, he's awesome. I love that guy. <laughs> and they'd be I, like, pull their shirt, Hexkin. There you go. Yeah. I've met some people that knew Richard that uh, weren't really that into crypto before. So surprisingly. Dude, dude I've walked around um, I've walked around cities before, at least one or two that I remember, and um, wearing a Hex shirt or some kind of swag. And people like notice, they like, you know, right in the window and say something uh, or on the street or otherwise that you will meet random people if you wear Hex stuff. And and crypto stuff out not not saying anyone should you know there's also offset concerns and stuff like that but um it's funny enough like you'll meet people who you never thought you would never think oh there's just people driving around or you're hanging out and there's there's hexagons out there you don't even know it yeah, i don't know how i didn't understand that that was a uh, brian armstrong I, <laughs> that should have been obvious the, the founder of coinbase so oh, yeah uh, i was gonna say it's either ben armstrong or brian i may I, have to go with brian on that actually yeah um i guess ben is just so fresh on my mind because he's on my fucking feet all the time <laughs> you know what I mean? so that's yeah. just that was that was your so me updates yeah is that my sami updates have poisoned my brain and all i can think about is ben he lives Dude, in my brain rent free me too you know what before i swear to god i, I knew that was brian armstrong because i was going to bring it up i was literally 10 minutes ago i was going to say oh yeah brian armstrong like has donated and then Somehow we got talking about Ben and then Somi is like, oh yeah, maybe it was Ben. And then, man, all right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's strange. Yeah. Yes, it is. Thank you, Coin Critic. You were, you were correct. Super Hex win. Welcome, welcome, man. Wore a Hex hat in San Francisco. got noticed. Yeah. I bet San Francisco, Vegas, um, you know, Miami, you're probably uh, bigger cities like that, especially people who are, you know, going to be hanging out, warmer weather um, and uh, people who have money and otherwise. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I got noticed a couple of times in Chicago as well. Um, charging my Tesla a guy right next to me, had a bunch of Paul chain gear on like he knew me, but he didn't like know. He was just like, yeah, you're that guy. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I'm that guy, man. <laughs> That's Paul chain going for you. And then I saw, Dude. I met this other guy in the street, just walking by like, Oh, you're crypto coffee. He was like on his way to some kind of like jujitsu practice or something I'm like, Oh my God, I'm famous. But uh, not really. It's just it's just good to know that we're actually being heard out there. And these could be people at their cubicle desk jobs, you know, wanting to kill themselves every day. But we, we give them hope. We give them hope for a better future. Hope, not hopium. Yes, exactly. Well, I, I give them hopium sometimes. I'm a dealer. 
<laughs> Hope you and Diller. Yeah. I was uh, I was thinking you should you should wear every time you're you're out and you feel like you know if you see somebody always have some coffee with you so they can always associate like you're that guy oh you crypt, 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 crypto mm. coffee yeah that guy that guy you gotta you gotta swag it out a little bit man you gotta get you like some kind of pulse chain coffee you have like a mug or um some kind of tumbler or something tears of hexagers okay. maybe I sell these on my YouTube okay. channel they're in the shelf if you guys watch my videos uh, if you want to buy one support the channel. Uh, I get, I get $4 and YouTube gets $12. So fair wow. world. That's a, that's a, that's a good deal. <laughs> oh, the, mar the margins on these things are awful, dude. Any, any merch that you try to sell through YouTube is just like, just so bad. <laughs> it's, it's real bad. That's a, uh, it's like doing a trade and it's like, Oh, I got 70% slippage. Do it. I need this. Yeah. Coin critic has four of the tears mugs. Coin critic. Thank you. You're my, you're my biggest fan. I do it for you, Coin Critic. I do it for you. Um, I was gonna ask. Oh, I was gonna say, but the, the mug you can't quite take in the Tesla. I wouldn't think it would fit in the cup holders, can you? Those goddamn cup holders. You're right. They're so small. I, I don't know why they're so small. Yeah, that's the Got one flaw of Teslas. It's like these are what are these cups for ants? Like <laughs> cups on, for. People drinking like six ounce, six ounce uh, water. And, I had and, to buy uh, a small there. Yeti tumbler. Like I had to buy like the super small Yeti. I mean, it's not even practical. Ah. It's like, it's just not, it's like, okay, great. I just don't even want this anymore. Uh, it's the uh, model M S MA. Sorry. No, I was going to say MA uh, said Burberry. That's the, uh, the Burberry bear that I have next to me. Most of the time I reach down to get it and it's not there. So it's, uh, it's in the house somewhere. So. Sorry, MA. I will. I will you have one? Next time. You have a Burberry oh, yeah. bear? I do. I do. It's a real Burberry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll go get it. Hold on. I'll be right back. Wow. <laughs> so uh, we, we get a bull market and RH Max buys a Burberry bear, huh? Guess we know where his priorities are. Just kidding. Tesla drivers have small bladders, lol. Yeah. I mean, I my bladder's not too big, but uh, <laughs> that, that might be true. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to definitely get in the cyber truck when it comes out. I'm going to cash in the, the uh, model S and upgrade to a cyber truck. Uh, Crypto King says, boom, what's up? Hexakins. Happy Hexloween. Hexloween <laughs> doesn't really roll off the tongue, but yeah. Happy Hexloween to you too. Crypto King. Uh, Chadwick lol. Burberry is here. Burberry is here. Burberry bear. Burberry. Yep. It is legit. hundred percent uh, authentic. Yeah. Ah, green screen. Okay, let me put it back here. I like Burberry them. Bear. Somebody said I should get a Burberry Bowl. I'm like, if they sold one, I would yeah. get one. We get we get some green candles. You know, coffee's getting a tattoo if it goes to a dollar. <laughs> if Hex goes to 10 cents, I'm going to try to find a Burberry Bowl, okay? I'm, I'm putting that out there right now. Yeah. Burberry. Yeah. Put you down there. He I, uh, sometimes. Yeah. I, um, you should sacrifice the bear. Then maybe the bear market can finally be over. <laughs> This picture of people burning LeBron jerseys just popped my head when he said that. <laughs> the bear market's over. Burn all the bears. Oh, yeah. No bears. Maybe donate them or something. But burning them feels uh, a little too symbolic. It's like, yeah, you know, this hasn't been all bad. It's, it's uh, you know, somebody mentioned in the comments earlier that oh, the SEC just gave us better DCA prices. And I'm like, you know, there are some things, uh, you know, there's a lot of pain, a lot of, a lot of price go down, a lot of people getting wrecked, but however, you know, I think there's a opportunity to learn in everything. So even though, you know, what if we always had a only up only bull market? Like, I don't know. That kind of sounds cool when I say it, but there had to be something bad about that. It's gotta be the biggest crash ever, right? Like economics wise in, in this world, it's gotta be, it can't, it doesn't work that way. So I don't know if I had a point from saying that it was just the, you got me thinking about burning bears. I'm like, ah, oh, no, save the bears. But Burn the also, bears. Bur also bears are monsters. Bears, bears yeah. are smelly. And nobody likes them. Stay away from the trees, bears. Yeah. Like, there's so many comments. We, we should do like a uh, get a transcript and uh, here's some analysis and data analysis. Take a strand transcript of all the streamers on crypto and then take all the phrases that so many has popularized. So many times they say them and you can tell how much who watches them the most. I think mean coffee. I hear coffee saying a lot of phrases. I'm like, oh, he's a Somi guy. He's he's into Somi. He watches oh, I love it. Too. I love it, man. I'm, a, I'm wearing my fluffy slippers right now. Adam begs, no burn Burberry. Bear. All right, Adam. Burn Burberry. Bear. Burn, burn into the ground. They poop Catch in the fluffies. woods. 
got your fluffy slippers and your uh you know richard's duck apparently and uh man i don't see you know that the ai stuff i do question sometimes i know it's not you know i know he's obvious because i heard him i've heard him cough it's, it's funny like little things made me question i'm like you know what i've heard him cough i've heard him like redo <laughs> phrases before but it's pretty rare like it is extremely rare which is i don't know how someone can speak that well so long and then again does he have a team it's like Whatever you're doing, I, I don't even care. Whatever you're doing, so me like keep doing it, man. You're, you're well, crushing. I imagine he's got bullet points and he just kind of rolls with it. I mean, we can. A lot of people are pretty good at off the cuff type of uh, just rambling. I'm okay, but you know, I do need to. I have more ums and uhs and stutters than I think Somi does. But we also don't see his face, so he might be chopping it up. He might be like if he has a long pause mm -hmm. or a couple of ums, he might be cutting that out. For all we know, um, it's easier to see my cuts on on my videos because my face will kind of like flash you know flicker a little yeah. bit but for all those people that think he's an ai uh, i think you guys need to get a life and choose a better conspiracy theory on that one because it's clear to me that he's not an ai i mean that's just even if he know. was even if he was like it's fine like i mean obviously he's not but like i don't this that's the thing it's like people make these i don't know just in general it's like these worries about things that so 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 what what if everyone's an ai like what if everyone doing doing good creating good content is all ai generated like what's what should should they stop should they stop yeah. doing it like, it's, it's, that's the right yeah he, he just he just makes a video form of his tweets it's like so when you're tweeting all day and you're making a video of the tweets it's it's very like achievable within one day span you know, you're just talking about what you just wrote and you're just kind of elaborating on it so um, but three videos a day every single day that's yeah it's gonna be exhausting it's like, okay, yeah, I'm not trying to downplay what he does, but it's like, it's, it's doable. Like I understand how it's doable. Like you're just talking about what's on your mind, you know? And it's not, there's not like some huge production value where he's got to worry about intros and crazy overlays and stuff like that. So I, I can understand it, but he, he's definitely an incredibly hard worker, but it's just like, look, that's, that's possible. That's achievable to do. The saying, so the only part, again, I, I don't want, I don't want you to feel like you're d defending. He's not an AI because yeah, I think it's pretty clear. He's not, <laughs> yeah. but, but just the fact that you can, he can make three videos a day of interesting things that people, you know, each video, thousands of views um, and you know, all that stuff. It, it's just, it is incredible. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I know he's got a system and you got to have a system like that. I mean, even with me, like clipping and producing videos just about every day, sometimes, you know, I run out of content, but especially if I've been streaming a lot, I have more content uh, to, to do and put out and schedule and stuff. And yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but even for him, it's like, again, three videos a day, two to three videos a day of not just two minute, five minute videos of like 10, 15, 20 minute long of topics that people are interested enough to watch. Um, it's just not just not a lot of filler stuff. So anyways, it's it's just um, it's, it's a remarkable. Miracle. And yeah, it's remarkable. And uh, we should celebrate it. And uh, yeah, shout out to Somi. Yeah, we're lucky to have a Somi here. Yeah, I'm glad he's on he's on team win. He chose the right team, that guy. He did, didn't he? Constant grind, that's right. It's a constant grind. I've been trying to do one video a day, and sometimes it's it's difficult for me because sometimes my heart's not in it. Like I'm just like, oh, if I don't have anything I'm compelled to talk about, it's just like yeah, it's a little more like pulling teeth, but then you get into the rhythm, right? So you start doing one per day, whether it's a live stream or pre-recorded video or a tutorial video or something like that. It does get a lot easier the more you just uh get the flow down right so i'm at this point now where even if i really don't feel like making a video i'll just talk just to say what's on my mind like i mean you don't need to overthink it some people just like that repetition they like seeing that familiar face every day and that builds trust right they start to know like and trust you you can sell courses you can onboard people more you get your message out there uh consistency is definitely key so uh, i've been trying to pick that up i, I took a I took, I took some inspiration from sami actually so yeah, he does. He, you know, when I see people creating content, doing valuable things, to come up with some idea on Twitter, or otherwise, and just make make an impact. Again, not just like that's the thing is is creating valuable content and not cheating, not not you know stirring up drama unnecessarily, or just like making something out of nothing, or just like right. extreme clickbait, all that stuff. Like not cheating, but actually creating valuable content that's what society should reward you for. Like that's how it works. You do it and you get rewarded. Yeah. And a scam is when you fake doing it and you get rewarded and then you're in that position. So 
Um, but you do yeah. see a lot of low-level content out there that gets somewhat views, right? I mean, you've got these guys, like the mainstream influencers, right? But they've got entire teams working behind the scenes of, let's write this script, and then you, re you read the script, you're the face guy, and you just teleprompter it, and we're going to have all the flashy overlays. You can kind of trick the human mind with all the bells and whistles and uh, make them think they're getting value. I mean, that's a lot of what YouTube is, is people think they're getting value. They're, why do you think like motivational videos and podcasts, like, some 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 of these uh categories are so popular because it's like it's dopamine releasing like you can have self help addiction right you go down these rabbit holes and everybody's got this these sound bites of here's the th seven ways to live a perfect life or three ways to make money online fast you know people love lists or do this one thing and it'll change your life forever you know it's and and you can have all kinds of those videos but uh I used to be addicted to self help that's how I know that you know I, I think a lot mm -hmm. of guys in their life they've gone through a phase maybe women too where you start following these guys like who knows you bounce around from dude to dude like maybe it's gary vaynerchuk for a couple of weeks and then it's like ty lopez and then it's like i don't know tony robbins or something and, and there are things to gain from everybody like you learn the core things that they're all trying to teach and it's pretty interesting that like, a lot of them are being authentic and being real but at some point you realize i just spent the last seven days watching four hours of youtube a day about all this self-help shit and i didn't do anything like you, at some point you need to stop learning and start doing yeah, for sure. It's, it's, I, I think it's, it's a good problem to have. I, mean, I guess there's worse things you could be addicted to than, than like self help or like just, you know, but I think it is one of those things you can go down the rabbit hole and then, okay, am I actually making a difference? Am I, am I doing anything? Am I changing anything? Or am I just acknowledging, oh, that's very interesting. Oh my gosh, that's really cool. Yeah. And then you just keep, keep going, going, going. All right. Are you just funneling time or are you like taking notes? Are you like you know, right. doing that kind of thing? Well, it makes you, it does make your brain feel like you are making progress, even though you still haven't done any real life work or anything. And, you know, it's, it's funny. So uh, this, this whole Richard stepping back thing has also been probably good for some people like myself, right? Like I can't just rely on just, oh, Richard's going to have another live stream where he tells me everything's going to be okay. So maybe I, I better like get my ass in gear and like, make make a course and try to onboard some people and, and make more content which, I, which i've been doing for what three and a half years now but it, it's even more motivating to me when he's not around all the time i mean i love the tweets i, I wish he would come back on a live stream don't get me wrong of course you know i'd love to see him on live stream but he's got his reasons i'm sure he's building in the background i'm sure he's got potentially legal issues and and hands tied maybe there but uh, it's given people a chance to kind of step up and create their own brands create their own things and there's 180 of us and maybe more. And these are just people that have put their face and reputation on the line for hacks, pulse chain and pulse X. No other community has that. They've got teams of people. They've got sponsorships. They're paid off under the table, usually to promote Rollbit or BlockFi or whatever shit that went bankrupt or buy bit. She'll get a margin trading. And the whole hacks, pulse chain community, we're, we're the opposite of that. We're the antithesis of that. We're like just actual people that like crypto for the ideals that it was founded on or for. You know, no middlemen, censorship resistance, uh, getting rich. We actually have the balls to talk about. Yeah, we want to get rich on this shit too. But we also we also like the freedom, but we also like getting rich. Those two things can coincide with each other. Wow. Isn't that something? Bro, I thought you were here for the technology. The <laughs> I mean, right now. That's the thing. It's like, I am. It's it's, it's both, you know. It's the, the tech makes the, the tech allows you to be free, but it also can make number go up. Win -win. You can have both. That, that's that's the thing about this community. You can have both. We have proven that. And hopefully we're going to prove it again and again and again. Um, it, it is surreal, though, that Richard hasn't been streaming. I haven't even, like you said it, and I was like, I, had, I don't even think about it. I didn't even think about him not streaming for, it's been since January of the Hex Conference, I believe, Maddie's Hex Conference, January. It's, you know, it's been almost 10 months since he streamed. And I, I don't even I don't even think about it. Like I see him tweeting. I see him not tweet for almost a week or so at some points, but it's like nothing, nothing's changed. Like, you know, we, we've got good news. We've got bad news. Candle goes up, candle goes down. It's, you know, like, what are you here for? Are you here to see Richard stream and tell you everything's going to be all right? Are you here to like make mad gains, yeah, you know, promote your own bag, like participate in free crypto, true DeFi. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't need him to stream. I want him to stream, but like, I don't even think about him not streaming. I think that some of the people that had Stockholm syndrome about him, like going away, because first of all, he never left. Right? He's still like, clearly he's here, man. Like, what do you, what more do you want? He's tweeting every day, maybe every other day, maybe every three days. Oh my God, where has he been for two? Like, 
if people are that insecure about the, this single point person needing to be there all the time constantly when he's when he's still here and he's still doing a ton of work or whatever allegedly I, no expectations allegedly behind the scenes then i just don't think i think those people were meant to be shaken out during this period of time i think uh if, if a little you know not being on camera is gonna scare them of having this figurehead right and, and he'll be back one day he'll be back for the glory he'll be back after hopefully i mean in a perfect world the sec just throws the case away right maybe the amicus brief helps maybe pulsepetition.org maybe that helps guys go sign pulsepetition.org but uh yeah yeah someone in chat is like that he just mentioned a dude that had those issues yeah i, I agree i'm not gonna call anyone out by name but there's people that have been freaked out freaking out and throwing a tantrum and uh we we do need to get rid of those people if they're not strong enough to hold for multi years right if they came in here six months ago and thought they were gonna just you know they're gonna get into pulse chain right away and it's gonna go up and to the right forever then they don't understand the game they're playing every new coin dumps when it launches especially when you had a whole bunch of people that bought in early right and some people are going to flake out early that's just the game that's how it goes you need six months maybe a year to shake everyone out and then things can go up but we're holding on five ten year time scales and some people i guess don't understand i mean we can yell and scream from the rooftops we can repeat it over and over long-term holding wins trading sucks long-term holding wins trading sucks and some people will just be like all right okay cool i get it and they'll be holding for a week they'll be holding for a month and they're like oh shit the price is down tell me which one to buy this long-term holding thing kind of sucks. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to go trade. And then they do it, and then they just get wrecked. And then it's like... Oh, my God. That? I stayed for 15 years. Why did I do that? Why did I do you ever that? See, yeah. You ever see that meme of the guy riding a bike, and then he's like, he sticks a stick in his own tires, in his spokes? <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> on the ground, he's like, who did that? Or something. He's like, why would they do that to me? That's basically that's, like a lot of these people out here. Hashtag trading. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah, day trading. Yeah, they, you know, I I may have spent a, a week or so day trading. And let me tell you, it's not, I, I don't recommend it to anyone. It's not fun. It does not help your sleep. It does not help you uh, during the day, stop looking at the charts. It, it really is like getting that experience. Is, it was like, whoa, okay. Now I'm glad these tools exist. I'm glad there's tools, you know, all the banking products and stuff like that. Um, I hope they bring a ton of money in the pulse chain, but boy, uh, are there are they for a certain group of people and not for the general public? I would say who who uh, kind of almost becomes like a job. And mm. I don't know. I don't want that job. I don't want any more jobs other than that job. Yeah, I can tell you guys a secret. Not, it's not really a secret because I'm about to tell you. But um, drop it. I, drop I did hot. a little. I did a little tiny leverage position, and I went one x leverage long on PulseX when PulseX was about point zero. It was. Uh, ninety percent at a ninety percent pulse X dip, so point zero 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 one. I did a one X leverage long. Oh my God, scary on Fame.io. Now, is this leverage trading? Technically, yeah, but it's so incredibly in my eyes that was so incredibly safe because I could the price could dip another ninety percent from where I was at before it was liquidated. And I'm just taking the bet that after we dip ninety percent on pulse X, we're not going to dip ninety percent more. Into small position, you know, I took out just a tiny little bit and uh, I'm just going to, I'm already in profit on that. And that's a one X long is could potentially get you kind of like two X your money, right? Cause you ride the price up of your underlying collateral and you have the one X on top of that, which you can sell later. So you can do these really, really safe strategies. But like, if you, if you don't understand that even going two X leverage scares me, like I don't even like two X leverage because that means the price can fall 50% and you're liquidated. Right. But uh, sometimes I play around in these other things because I just want to see how they work. And it <laughs> it was like, a you know, maybe a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, well, PulseX looks kind of uh, bottomy here. Maybe I'm wrong, but I did it. Oops, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's um, <clears throat> somebody had a comment the other day. I think it was today. I was, you know, I don't know if you're, do you do you read your comments on, on YouTube and stuff. I don't think you do. I don't, dude. I, I value yeah. my mental health too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna start. I might get on that that bandwagon at some point, but yeah, everyone, I usually don't get anything that bad. But somebody said, I think today, uh, they were like, they were like this guy because I, I posted the video of Buck and Dylan on uh, going through Founders Week, going through Fame and uh, Fiat and, and Fatty and, and all the products, and I post the video is literally uh, like it's like some understanding the risk reward of leverage trading. Literally understanding the whole video was about, it was like going through Buck and he was saying like, oh, you know, here's the risk. I was asking all the questions. 
making like literally educational. Here is what you need to know about leverage trading, not promoting it, not saying anyone should do it, saying literally, here's the risk and here's the reward. Here's how people, here's how professional th people think about it. And then one of the comments was like, uh, something about like this guy went from making validator videos to promoting leverage trader and something. I'm like, how is that promoting leverage trade? Like I literally, like my content is so educational. I cannot make it more like unbiased in, in, in some ways. I'm not even that interested in M NFTs, but I love that we have a huge NFT platform to bring people into full chain and block yeah. up TBL and stuff. I'm not that into leverage trading. I'm glad we have these banking apps. A lot of people are interested in that. A lot of people want to be able to do these things in, in the bull run and the bear run and in between. I'm not that interested in meme coins and stuff. I'm glad we have a DEX. It's hopefully <laughs> going to bring in a ton of people to Pulse Chain. Right. Like you can totally have this position where you don't have to care that much about the thing in order to recognize the thing has value. Like we just need to recognize. I totally agree with you, man. There's different strokes for different folks and not everyone's going to have the same entry point that you do. And I, what I say all the time is I really, really, really hope that people that already have, have the wholesome long-term holding attitude, like most hexagons and hopefully most pulse chain people and stuff. Um, I hope that it's, it's a one-way diode into these more wholesome long-term strategies. Meaning I hope that when people get onboarded into NFT platforms, wh whichever platform it is, I don't know, whichever NFT collection they're into, um, whether it's Mintra, whatever, Tang Gang, whatever, whatever these things are, right. Or whatever meme coins they buy and they, maybe they get in onboarded all, through nine inch somehow, you know, or maybe they're degen leverage traders and they get onboarded through famous somehow. I hope that some portion of these people sees the better way. They see where the real winning team is. And then they hop over to, you know, team crypto, team long-term, Hex Pulse Chain, Pulse Hex, all that kind of stuff. And I just I just don't like to see when people go the opposite direction. But then again, it's you can almost make the argument, maybe these people were never really, you know, one of us in the first place. If you're going to, you know, if you said you're all about Pulse Chain and now you're full-time day trading meme coins, Eh, you probably were always just a meme coin day trader. You just decided to wear the pulse chain community hat for a little bit, you know? That that's the hard thing too is evaluating um evaluating, you know, like who's who yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get into like true hexagons or people I yeah. Like none of that. I think that's less interesting in this thinking about how valuable people are to the ecosystem. Right, like everyone has valuable. a different level for sure. Exactly. So like hating people because they they're they're halfway in halfway out or they do this or that it's like to me i look at people and say how valuable are they like no matter what they they're doing their actions all this stuff they say something i don't like they don't right they don't, right they don't it's like, not, it's they don't not like, me, like a moral judgment on you <laughs> like oh you don't agree with my mission therefore like whatever but if, if yeah you're those not, millions of dollars of tvl get out i don't <laughs> i don't like what you said that one time like yeah. That's not, yeah. Yeah. We're not like the, um, we're not trying to be the, uh, the woke police over here or like the, the hexagon police or anything, but it's like, yeah, you are more useful to me if you align more closely with my values and it's on a spectrum, right? Some people are kind of like 50% on my level with like what, what we want to do. And that's cool. We can be friends. Like I, I consider myself, you know, every, every, we have a friendly relationship with everybody as long as they're some level of connected with us and, and furthering our cause. And at least not going at the very, very least, not being a detractor, like not just hating or spreading FUD or like deliberately trying to scam people. And I think there's like, there's something you could, there's something good to be said about a lot, a large majority of the pulse chain community, right? Whether, whether they're trying to build their side project, even some of these reflection tokens that I hate, you know, I, I don't touch these with a 10 foot pole. Maybe there's some chance that, you know, they they still are potentially opening up the, uh, you know, the, the idea of pulse chain to people that might not have found it otherwise. So, yeah. uh, you know, there's just different, it's a chaotic world. It's kind of like, we're all having to come to terms with what is our mission. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and everyone like has their, has their own thing. And I, you know, maybe, maybe 10% of people are like, Hey, they're just never going to leave pulse chain because they love hex. They're only going to buy like hex derivatives. They're only going to buy, they're, you know, special Pulse Chain projects they love. They're always going to, you know, always going to support Richard. And maybe like 80% of people are just in the middle. They're like, hey, who knows? Like maybe I'll create my own coin one day and maybe, or maybe I'll like uh, join another community or maybe I'll do whatever. Not saying those things are bad, just saying like they're they're not like 100%, they're not 100% committed to this ecosystem. And then there's the other side, the other 10% that's like, hey, they're, they're literally here to take advantage of people and scam people. 
and you'll find out now or you'll find out later on, but they're, it's going to happen eventually. So like it's already happened a couple of times, right? Yeah. We've seen scammers blatantly rug pull. Um, but then there's a lot of people with good intentions. They don't, they don't think they're scammers and other people will call them scammers. And it's like, well, there, maybe their project sucks, <laughs> but, and maybe you can think that their project sucks, but you know, maybe they, they onboard like 10 new DGENs from Binance smart chain. And maybe it's a net positive. Maybe a couple of these guys, you know, because people can be um, force multipliers as well. If you onboard somebody, they, they've got different levels of like, how much do they do? There's a lot of just silent people, people that just watch and just want to be entertained or people that don't even care. There's people, there's Hex and Pulse Chain holders that are totally mentally stable and going about their normal society life right now. And they don't keep up to date on the news or the Twitter drama every day. They don't subscribe to any content creators. They just think they heard maybe, oh, Pulse Chain might go up. Okay, I'll buy some and I'll wait a couple of years and they, they, that's probably a large silent majority of uh, people as well. Like I sometimes wonder how many people are even on social media, like how much of Twitter is representative of the actual holders in real life. Like how many, how many normal people are out there that are in, uh, that don't have mental issues like we do that just like, <laughs> that like to watch their bags get dropped 90% all the time and still talk about it. I'm so, telling you, man, you, you painted a picture you, like those people who like don't they're on Twitter every day. They don't know the latest thing. They're not watching streams or whatever. I'm like, that sounds that sounds pretty nice. I got that sounds pretty good, actually. Yeah. Like the guy that came out to me and was like, hey, um, we need to do this amicus brief. And like he reached out to me about it. It was his idea. His name is Daniel. You'll meet him. And I, I go follow him on Twitter. And it's like he never posts anything I'm like, wow, this guy must be have such a peaceful life. <laughs> Just not on Twitter every day. And he just decided that he was going to make this amicus brief into his thing. So the dude wrote up the entire amicus brief, took him days, right? It's a long freaking document and I proofread it. So I would know. And, um, pulsepetition.org, everybody, pulsepetition.org. And it's like, this guy just stepped up to the plate and decided that he was going to make this his thing. Right. And so I think Ooh. that's, that's incredible. Two X those numbers for you, by the way. Wow. 68. Wow. We got a lot, dude, it's going to be so easy to get a thousand. We <laughs> Maybe we should go for 5,000. I don't know. Ooh. Good. But yeah. Good. We're almost there. Patrick says, sometimes I feel it's the same thousand hexagons and the rest is just bots. You know, Pat Patrice, there is a theory called the dead internet theory. Have you heard of this RH max? I have. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently sometime in, you know, the mid two thousands, uh, the majority, or maybe it was the early, the early tens, like 2011, 2012. Um, the vast majority of the internet and comments are just bots. And we're just, uh, kind of living in this AI artificial, simulation already um it's weird oh, that's kind of scary it's kind of scary to think about like ai and you know i i, I literally i've been working on a new coding project this weekend and uh, i'll be talking about a little bit later on once i get more traction on it and i've been using chat the first time i've used chat gpt i used pretty much the sample code and then chat gpt to work back and forth as like my co my co producer my co-writer the entire day today and it's wonderful. It's great. It's not perfect. I have to go back and forth and do different things, but it is like, wow, this is a uh, way different when I started doing coding and it's super helpful. And, uh, but yeah, that there's that side, which is like, Hey, our friend is the other side where it's like, you, you know, you're walking around and everyone's just like, it's not even their phones anymore. They're just like hooked up to a VR headset and they're just, you know, they don't communicate. It's kind of like the surrogates movie, sort of like that. <laughs> and then yeah. everything is, no one's like, no one wants to live their actual life. Everyone's just like in VR and like, nobody wants to talk. They no, just want like to ready like player one. Game. Kind of like ready player one. I, I think surrogates is probably even the, the, I think the, the more accurate, like social aspect with, have you seen it with Bruce Willis? I haven't. And, uh, no, I have not. Okay. Watch that one. If you're, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, it's, it's like, it shows the more social, like, um, people wanting to be other people and not wanting to be themselves. So they like, they put themselves in a pod and they just like never get out of it. And they just wake up and like, you know, do the yeah. essentials and just go to that. It's, it's well, I mean, that's kind of like the matrix. I and mean, there's, there's a lot of movies with that theme. But. Yeah. Hey, yeah. wait, so you, so you, speaking of code, you're mm -hmm. a coder for people that don't know, Max, Max is a really smart dude. He codes all the time. You've been coding something. What are you, what are you cooking up over there? I saw on Twitter, you were, uh, you're doing some s smart person stuff. You want to, you want a sneak peek? Yeah, if you don't mind. I'll give you. I don't have. I mean, I don't have it on this uh, computer, but I'll, I'll go to the thread and just riff on it for a minute. Cool. So, I came across. I'm going to reference them at some point. I came across somebody posting about, "Hey, would you, uh, would you?" Um, they, they posted some screenshot about uh, them doing some DeFi stuff, and yeah, this one. And uh, I was like, they were using a library, and I was like, "Oh, that's very interesting. They can read stuff from the blockchain." 
and uh, they can basically get a stream in real time of like the swaps and stuff that are happening uh, from from different different platforms. For example, UniV. Uh, let's just say you can get a stream of stuff coming from like UniV two across the chain. It knows how to read stuff like that. So uh, this one, for example, the screenshot I posted was just a bunch of swaps that I just uh, in command line using Python, using the library. Uh, I just modified uh, a lot of the the example code from it, and yeah, from this one right here. Yeah, somebody asked about it, and I posted the link. So Web three, uh, Ethereum, DeFi, and essentially you can use it to just watch the blockchain for stuff like trades and stuff going on. And these are like transaction hashes. So I'm kind of working on something cool. right now where it'll make it a little bit more interesting. But go ahead. No, it's cool. I see all the coins I recognize and some that I don't. You got nine inch BBC, Link, PLSB, PLSD. Yeah, it's yeah. just a huge stream. And then I just hit control C to stop it because I was like, okay, I just want to take this screenshot. But it's like if you let it go, I can filter, I can type in hex and I can filter by only like only show me hex transactions. And I can see like you know, tons of money going back and forth. Nice. So you can make front end uh, visualization tools with this? Yeah. So what I'm what I'm working on now is doing about maybe doing a website, a website that shows basically a stream of transactions. You can click on the transaction in real time. So basically you can see real time transactions coming across pulse chain, at least on uni V2 um, uh, trades and also LP positions changing as well. It also has that type of data. So you've, you've heard it here first stream of stream of transactions that you can watch going across chain. I think, it, yeah, the LP movement tracker would be a useful tool to some people, perhaps. Um, you could see where people's intentions were, maybe if they were bullish or bearish based on liquidity moving from Ethereum pairs to stablecoin pairs. Um, you could even see where the, the hex liquidity is going, right? Is, is liquidity growing on the eHex, PHex pair over time? Uh, that's something that's... Does it show you that on Paul Sachs, the website, the info page? I think it does. Yeah, charts of, of yeah. Uh, liquidity going back and forth. Yeah, TVL being locked up and otherwise. Yeah, let's see here. Let's go to pools. Yeah, you can see the liquidity over time, but uh, I guess I don't know. It's, it's what do you think would be valuable for yourself? I'm just I, I don't know. I'm kind of so the data I can get right now is seeing basically transactions and LP and new pairs being created. So I'm really not sure at this point, I kind of just had this idea of like, okay, I want to see a stream and I want to be able to like look at transactions. And from there, I kind of want to be like, okay, what is useful from this? I really haven't identified what is super interesting from it other than can read that data. And then if I can read the data, what else can I, like, is there something I kind of like, you know, send it to access, for example, and be like, Hey, what would, if you could see a stream of transactions coming across, like, what would you be interested in? in? Like, what would be useful from that? Or in of course yourself to feedback and stuff, but. Yeah, um, maybe um, maybe you could do like a triangular arbitrage thing where it pairs hex, pulse, and pulse x together, and says which one is like the one that is lacking. Like, what what, what where's the laggard right now? And that's the one to invest in right now. You know, because I, I do. Yeah. I'm, I imagine these coins might have some kind of seasonality to them. Like, we just saw hex kind of run up a lot relative to pulse and pulse x, it's starting to make pulse x look very attractive. Um, Maybe there's something to be done with that. Yeah, I was thinking the number of transactions too, because if you can, if you see, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, I don't know, in a way it's like, okay, I, I don't want to make deck screener. Deck screener basically has all this stuff, maybe a little bit of delay. I can get it, maybe I can get it faster, maybe not, but like, I don't want to recreate deck, deck uh, screener either with it. So it's like, yeah, yeah, I don't know yet. I think if nothing else, I'll, I will, it's intellectually like fulfilling for me because I'm like, oh, this is cool. I get to work on the blockchain thing. It's interesting. And I want to open source some code around it. And then if I do stand up a server, which I kind of already did, I already stood up a server. I'm already like testing it. I'm making like a web uh, API, not API, but web framework around it, basically to hit the code on the back end to show it on the web page. Um, so it's just a learning exercise for me too. And I'll open source the code. So yeah, so anyone can like go take it and go uh, go build something else if they don't like what my my final simple product, which will probably be. I don't plan on building like. I'm not going to build like look into hex with it. I'll say that. I'm not. I'm yeah. Not you don't want to reinvent the guy. wheel. You know, a lot of people have made a lot of cool stuff. So finding a use case and application for the, this data is, it's the hard part really. Yeah. So that's, that's been my, I don't know. I've been heads down on that today. So that's been, that's been my fun little thing, but we'll see. I think uh, I'll probably talk about it in the next couple of days. If I make some progress, I'm, 
I was stuck. I was stuck all day with with Chat GPT, going back and forth. Like, no, this is a bug. It keeps giving me the error. What, what's the what's the thing? It's like, oh, try this, try this, try this. Finally made some progress, but still not completely there. It's it's funny. Like, this is the first day I've talked to the AI back and forth a whole lot, like for you know at least two or three hours, and I've learned that they're very good at presenting data and like presenting different ways of doing things, but reasoning. It's it's very clear. Reasoning isn't there. Re, like. It's something where if I would have known the library better, if I would have known the frameworks better, or if I would have just been familiar, I would be like, okay, obviously, like this is not gonna, this solution is not gonna work. I had to do something different. So then I got to tell ChatGPT, I go, oh, this solution is not gonna work because of this. How how else would I do it? And then now it's oh, I got some more data. I got to feed myself. So it's pretty interesting when you talk to robots for a while. You're like, oh, you're you're very smart in one way, but not uh, not not quite a human. Yep, that's right. AI's got a long ways to go before it takes over. Yeah, throwback to dystopia. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen, but uh, that does kind of cross my mind from time to time. Me and Elon got that in common, at least. <laughs> yeah, I, I find AI is a lot about, it, it's really kind of just like the next gen search engine. It's a beefed up version of, it's a personal assistant and a search engine and like just anything you can imagine it can answer, but it's limited by... I don't know. It's limited by lack of having a specific goal, like which is good. You don't want to like program it with some weird. On your, I, they, they start to do these uh, woke biases, right? And like as an AI model, I favor the left's opinion no matter what. So Just don't talk about history, and then uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I don't know where it's all going, man. It's a language library, says Coin Critic. Literally, yeah, it's a uh, it's a huge language library. I think, yeah, the only, the only thing I hope doesn't happen is like we become so, it just doesn't erode like what it feels like to be human. That's, hmm. it, it just, it's one of those things where I don't, you know, it doesn't enhance our vices, like that kind of thing. I think it has a huge possibility to make us want to do all the dopamine hits, all the things much faster, quicker, and all the time um, instead of yeah. something should be hard. Some things we shouldn't have shortcuts to. Um, because that makes you better as a person. Um, so I hope that doesn't degrade humanity like this. That's my biggest worry. Yeah, well, it, it's degraded those that um, only want to consume, right? Like it's made consumption of content incredibly easy and it's only getting easier. So you've got these meta, you know, glasses, right? They just came out with these AR glasses. And I actually thought they were pretty cool because I'm like, oh, wow, you can live stream from your glasses. Um, but I guess that also means you can consume content anywhere you go as well. And the zombies are only going to get more zombified, but you really need to differentiate yourself as a person with a plan or a person following a plan. And all these people, like if we can afford the time to step away from the technology and meditate about what's important and where we want to go and devise a goal and a mission that we want to strive towards, that's going to be the differentiating factor of, I think, who's living a human experience and who's living a, uh, you know, a mundane life that's been co-opted by technology. Yeah, a um, a <clears throat> curated life by it's definitely going to have ads. There's definitely going to be ads on it. Like, <laughs> that uh, says, what if ads in my eyeballs? Ads all the time, dude. I, I yeah. well, you know, we have a virtual reality already, and we see the. I think the average American. Hold on, let me let me Google this. How many ads does a person see a day? It's some crazy high number. We are exposed to anywhere from four to ten thousand ads a day, nearly double the amount of ads that someone saw in two thousand and seven. So when you think about this, it's like this has already been happening. It's already in motion, right? People are already addicted to their phones. They're already when they're on the tour when when they're, when they're on vacation in the Grand Canyon, right? How many people are experiencing the Grand Canyon now through their iPhone? When they're sitting right there at like this majestic, beautiful, you know, at, at the, uh, the precipice of this beautiful thing, and they're they're looking at it through their iPhone, so uh, that's only going to continue to get more and more. It's just going to get worse unless we take the time to reflect on what we're actually doing. Um, yeah, and yeah. and just to just to say too, like I am one of the people who I mean, I've worked in tech forever, and <clears throat> I definitely love to see new technology but i recognize like it is one of those things this is like the it, it is dangerous in a way like it is I, like i totally sympathize with everyone out there who's like ah oh, yeah not the whole ai is taking their jobs although that's probably somewhat true as well 
it, like not the not the outrage stuff, but just the hey, this can degrade society. Like this is this is the easy pill of easy pills, and we don't want to be like fifty years from now be like, oh, well, if we were, all you know, everyone who was complaining was just they're just old and they're just like old man yells a cloud. It's like, man, I don't, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know if yeah. we should go back to the eighteen hundreds, but <laughs> I hope twenty twenty uh, or twenty twenty one twenty is uh is pretty cool and not everyone just. I don't want to say on their phones. It's not going to be about phones at that point. It'll be like ads on your eyeballs, that sort of thing. Anyways. It could be a sure, we, I, I just hope we're not ushering in a new dark age of everybody becoming yeah. stupid and uneducated. Um, and it's possible. That's the thing. It's like, it's not like, it's not outrageous to think that's possible. It is possible. I, and, well, yeah, humanity has gone in these cycles of society coming together and then collapsing over and over again. And uh, a lot of people are comparing America to late stage Rome and maybe where we're at now to even maybe like the 1600s where there were many like few, many tiny, all kinds of uh, warring nations and stuff and decentralization of power uh, rather than centralized empire building and stuff like that. And so when you add technology onto it, it's just getting a control, you know, it, the, the class that's in control of their own urges and uh uses technology to further their agenda is going to be the ruling class and uh, a lot of people won't even know what hit them a lot of people will be just victims to whatever's forced upon them like new iphone yeah they're, they're all going to work to buy the new iphone just so that they can scroll doom scroll twitter more and see more ads and buy more material shit yeah. so you know what? You don't want to wake up one day and be like, I have everything I ever wanted. And like, you have no friends, you have no family, you're alone, but you have, uh, you know, all the games and like all the, you have access to social media and like everyone thinks you're popular. Like, I don't, I don't want to wake up like that one day. I don't want the world to think that's a cool thing either. Yeah. So but I, I don't want to be, some people are scared. They think progress is the problem because it's, it's led to all these new problems, but we're still, we need to be, I think this techno optimist thing is worth reading. And it's, it's important to realize that even, you know, a, a peasant today has a higher quality of life than a, a medieval king, because, you know, as long as they have a, a shitty apartment with a refrigerator and a microwave, like you're better off than somebody that ha used to have to shit in a hole. You know, even the Kings, like they didn't have plumbing, right? The richest guys, on, the richest guys in the world. So technology has raised the, 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 the rising tide has lifted all ships. It's raised the, the lower bar of quality of life. Um, so this is saying it's economic growth is not a cure-all, but lack of growth is a kill-all. Interesting. We believe everything good is downstream of growth. We believe not growing is stagnation, which leads to zero-sum thinking, internal fighting, degradation, collapse, and ultimately death. Yeah, that's why I align myself with crypto, uh, cryptocurrency because that's one of the few good things I see happening where it's it's growing and, and empowering people. And if you can make people rich and free, I think that's a better world. Me meaning of life. So, okay, so it says we're not left-wing, although some of us are. We're not right-wing, although some of us are. We're we are materially focused for a reason, to open the aperture on how we may choose to live amid material abundance. A common critique of technology is that it removes choice from our lives and it makes decisions for us. This is true yet offset by the freedom to create our lives that flows from the material abundance created by our use of machines. Material abundance opens the space for religion, politics, and choices socially and individually. We believe tech is liber liberatory. We believe tech opens the space of what it means to be human. All right. What's the enemy here? Enemies are bad ideas. Okay. Let's, let's keep going. Bureaucracy even. Yeah. Regulatory capture. Yeah. That's I'm in line with this. Maybe this was my philosophy the whole time. I just didn't know it. What does it say about the future? Uh, we owe the past and the future. Okay. David Deutsch is, is legit. Quoting him, we have a duty to be optimistic because the future is open, not predetermined. Therefore, we cannot just be accepted. We are all responsible for what it holds. Thus, it is our duty to fight for a better world. I've always agreed with that. Yeah, I'm, I've always been optimistic. You know, you have to be realistic, but also optimistic. Otherwise, you'll just turn into a nihilist and your life is going to suck anyway. So it's like if you can just choose to be an optimist or a pessimist, like why wouldn't you? If you have this freedom of choice, just choose the, the path that leads to a better life. You're more fulfilled. You'll end up making shit that fulfills other people. 
I don't understand. Like, cause I went through that nihilism phase in high school for like a year and I was super depressed. <laughs> I was like, I was reading, it was right after I read this book by Albert Camus called uh, the stranger. And I was just like, mm-hmm. that one really set me off in a weird way for like a while. Um, but ever, you know, ever since then, like, you know, I grew up and matured a little bit. I, I don't, I don't know what it was. I just chose that optimism was better. Glass half full is pretty much always better. Yeah, I think I'll say one more thing on the AI. It's 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 one of those things where it's like there's no I, I feel like there's no way to win with for as far as regulation. If there's no regulation, it's it's like I don't know, it could go insanely bad in certain ways. If there is regulation, it's just gonna be bad regulation. So it's like it's regulatory capture. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's tough. It's tough. We can just yeah. Optimist. I'm always optimistic. I'm very you need rules. You just need good rules. And sometimes, you know, you need new regulators. Like maybe the SEC should not even be in control of digital assets. Yeah. Test your mental fortitude by looking at the PLS chart. Oh, All God. Right. Everybody's we'll still up. watching. Everybody's still watching is extremely mentally strong. Congratulations. We'll hey, a little pump. Start. Nice to see a little green number there. We've had red numbers for a couple of days. Let's see if it loads. Hmm. Load, damn it. Kind of slow. Yeah. Kind of slow, gopulse.com. No, I'm just kidding. I love gopulse.com. Yes. Whoever that mystery developer is, is uh, he's a blessing. I'm going to punch the browser if you don't load. So I will not. I will not be defeated. Coin critic is skeptical of VCs. Yeah, it is weird that a VC wrote that. Um, VCs tend to sell out eventually. Um, I guess some of them can have good intentions. I don't know. Like angel investors, like they're not all bad. But uh, some- sorry. Yeah, just looking at the daily. We had those candles up, 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 and then hmm. womp, womp, womp. Yeah. Well, if you're a trader. That's that's one thing. If you're if you're doing longs and shorts, you're you're watching these things. But if you're uh, if you're chilling, if you're uh, relaxing, if you're uh, enjoying your life, maybe not too too many validators. Yeah, we just hit somebody put in there. We had like 48k now, which is insane. Um, that is way too many. I totally agree. Um, <laughs> that is that is a very good thing. Very cool. I'm moving, but I, I can't wait to spin mine back up again. I can said not a 15 minute guy. I posted the um, I posted <laughs> the tweet the other day about like hex and then just a red bubble and it was the uh, somebody sold. I, I quoted the the well the the wells whatever the thing is uh, that says like the big buys and sells. I quoted it because they sold, somebody sold like 12 million and I accidentally had on the one minute chart and Trayvon James <laughs> commented and he was like. Man's got it on the one minute chart. I'm like, oh my God, I actually did. I didn't even think about that. I had it. I was looking at something else. And uh, funny enough, he called it out though. So. Nice. It's cool that Crypto Bubbles is supporting P hacks and E hacks now. That's a big yeah. deal. You know why that's a big deal is because a lot of people use Crypto Bubbles and a lot of normies use it. And a lot of people didn't realize there's two versions of hacks. So this is going to force them to realize that, oh, hacks has two different prices. Yep. I mean, it has the whole time, but. You've been living under a rock, so here you go. Here's your shiny little bubbles. Now you can learn something, maybe. God, those guys are so stupid. They have two tickers. God, never <laughs> buying that. Never buying that crap. Yeah. Yeah. We're well, gonna, we're, little do they know, we've got two tickers for every single coin on Ethereum. So if they don't finish, like EX and P hacks, they're gonna hate a lot of coins. Finish this. Uh, finish this sentence. We never get tired of. Uh. New shit coins, <laughs> winning. Oh. We're gonna tell them when they see the two tickers. Winning, winning, winning. Uh, <laughs> great stream, man. Hey, again, everyone. I kind of forgot what we're even streaming about. Let me uh, post in the chat again. Public comments, GPT. Get your stuff in. Uh, yeah, make sure you've got an hour and a half left. If you do not submit the half. comment, crypto will fail, and it is all your fault. You will feel really, really like you should have did so in some way, shape or form, if, if not. And a lot of people have, and if you wanna be part of team, getting your comments in, you know where to go. Copy has a video on it that he thinks no one's watched, but many people have, I've seen it in the chat. It's been very helpful. So go watch that, Crypto Coffee, um, public comments or something, you'll find it, or just look for it <clears throat> in the tweet that I posted stream on. 
that's all I got for you. Chat, you've been amazing. You've been excellent. Yeah. Chat, you've awesome. been very entertaining. Thank you for the laughs. Um, you guys are awesome. And thanks for having me on RH Max. Always a pleasure. Of course, man. Many, many more. Everyone, Sci Vibe and 5555. Five, five, five. We are out. <laughs>